Raina is a freshman in college at the University of Chicago and has $600 set aside in her budget to visit her family and friends in Boston throughout the school year. If she wants to fly, an average round-trip flight costs $200, and the flight is only two hours. If she wanted to drive with a friend, an average road trip would only cost her $100 in shared gasoline, but includes a 15-hour drive. Part A, create an equation that represents the combinations of the different types of travel that allows Raina to stay in her budget. Part B, graph the equation for her budget. And part C, provide two combinations that fit within her budget, one combination that would be under budget, and one combination that would be over her budget. When I see big word problems like this, I like to review them once more to annotate it and set the problem up with the parts I need to solve it. I can circle $600 and label this as my budget. I can also circle $200 for the flying and $100 for the driving and use different variables to represent the two types of travel. I'll use X for flying and Y for driving. Now that I've got the necessary info set up, we can move to part A, which asks us to create an equation of the combinations of flying and driving that meets Raina's budget. Flying will cost $200 multiplied by the amount of flights she'll take, which we set up earlier to be X. For driving, it costs $100 multiplied by the amount of time she'll drive, which we set up earlier to be Y. And when we add these two terms together, it should equal our budget of $600. Now that we have our equation, we are asked to graph it. There are multiple ways to graph an equation, and you can choose a method that works for you, but I think the easiest way to graph an equation is to use slope-intercept form. So I'll show you how to convert the equation we have to y equals mx plus b, where m represents slope and b represents the y-intercept. To do this, we need to isolate our y variable. And remember that whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to both sides. With this equation, we can first subtract 200x on both sides, which will leave us with 100y equals 600 minus 200x. Then, we can divide 100 on both sides, which will result in y equals 6 minus 2x. And since I find it easier to view an equation in slope-intercept form, we can match the y equals mx plus b formula and swap these terms to become y equals negative 2x plus 6. Now, let's graph it. We can start our graph by drawing a point on the y-intercept, so I'll draw a dot on 6 on the y-axis, or 0, 6. Then I can use our slope to draw our next points. Our slope of negative 2 is equivalent to negative 2 over 1 in fraction form to help demonstrate rise over run. So we'll go down 2, over 1, down 2, over 1, down 2, over 1. And here is Raina's budget equation on a graph. We can use this line to help us with the next part. We need two combinations that fit within her budget, so I'm going to pick any two points. This first one has a coordinate point of 1, 4, which means Rana can fly once and drive four times. The second point has a coordinate of 3, 0. This means Rana can fly three times but drive 0. These two points fit within her budget. We are also asked to find a combo that would be under and over her budget. For under her budget, I can pick any point underneath her budget equation, so I'll pick this point. This coordinate of 1, 2 means that if Raina chose to fly once and drive twice, she'd be under her budget and have some money left over. For over her budget, I can pick any point above her budget equation, so I'll pick this point. This coordinate of 2, 5 means that if Raina chose to fly twice and drive five times, she would spend more than her budgeted $600 for travel. Let's review everything we did. We first created an equation to represent the problem. Then we converted a slope-intercept form, or y equals mx plus b. Next, we then graphed the equation using slope-intercept form. And the last step was to interpret the points on, under, and above the budget equation line. 